Lord, I could, uh, I tell you what, uh, open the eyes of my heart. I, I, I remember when I was worshiping back there, I couldn't help but to think of the stories in the scriptures. As we're talking about toxic words today, the stories in the scripture, the Lord, what's it, what's it take to, to, to really overcome the thing that seems to bring us the most trouble? Or the thing that starts the most fires, which is our mouth, our tongue, and what we say, and when we say it, what is that thing? And open the eyes of my heart. And I, I remember the Lord put it upon my mind and said, you know, before I can have their mouth, I have to have their heart. Amen. And the stories in the Bible that I have seen where God has done a wondrous work answered prayer, showed guidance where the Holy Spirit had come in and gave comfort, where the Holy Spirit came down and gave baptism of the Holy Spirit, and mighty works were done in any city, village, or town. It was because they decided to give them this, their heart. So this morning, I ask you to have that mindset this morning. As we move throughout this message today, though it might be a very short message, an easy message, very hard to apply, but not so hard if you give God your heart, then He can have your mouth. Right? Give God your heart, He then can have your, your mouth. The Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. So when I'm telling you, I'm back here praising and worshiping the Lord, and God put that upon my mind, and then when it especially lines up with Scripture, I'm telling you, that's a divine message for you. That God has to have your heart. Then He can have your mouth. Pastor, I don't know. It's just when I walk into that work door, or when that woman gets on me like she does, or when, when them kids start acting up, you know, the devil just gets in me, and I just, I just, I give them hell. Why? Because God don't have your heart at that moment. You've yielded it. You've given it over to your flesh, your simple desires. It takes over. You get where I'm coming from? When you're at church, it seems to be maintained. It seems to be suppressed. It seems to be all in control. But I would say what you do here needs to go with you there. It needs to be in every aspect of your life. It needs to be on your social media. It needs to be on your text messaging. It needs to be in your workplace. It needs to be at your home. It needs to be in your parenting. It is too important for God, too important for you to lose this battle. You win the battle over your mouth, you won big in big ways. You won big ways. You won a war. Today, I, you know, like I said, I'm going to talk to you about toxic words. And you ever hear that phrase? And maybe you can help me finish it. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. That's partially true. That's a half truth. You might be thick skinned, and that might be true to you to a degree, but I don't think that's true of you. Depending on who's saying it. If it's a stranger down the road or in their car, hey, where'd you come off for? They give you all kinds of sign language. And lip reading. <laughs> that is, you know, that might not bother you so much, but let it be a spouse. Let it be a son, a daughter, favorite uncle or aunt, a grandmother or grandfather. Let it be a close friend. Let them say it. And that's insane is not so true then. It does hurt. As a matter of fact, words bruise and crack the bones. They hurt. They can hurt for a day, they can hurt for a week, they can hurt for a month, or they can hurt for years and decades. There are families divided and have been for decades because of words. 
Words are powerful. Matter of fact, the Bible says that in the coming day, in the judgment we will be judged by every idle word that comes out of our mouth. Every idle word that comes out of our mouth. You should treat your words like you're throwing hundred dollar bills out. And if anybody's a conservative in here, <laughs> that ain't going to happen and your words will be fewer. Who has the, uh, no one really has the financial means to be, I mean, think about it. Every word you speak, you gave a hundred dollar bill for. If, if, like in the previous messages, if, that I talked about with man versus wife, and we talked about the differences between men and women, and women speak over 10,000 words a day and stuff, and men half that or less and, and stuff, that'd be a lot of money. If we just pay attention to what comes out of our mouth as if it was taking something out of our spiritual bank account, I think we would be more reserved, more conservative. And the only, the only way you're going to get there is if the Holy Spirit, if you allow the Holy Spirit to have your heart. That I can't get any more serious than that. I mean, I'm, I'm convicted back here. What, what I'm saying, I just all I can do is say, thank you, Lord. And he, he's wanting to create a holy, it's like the song says, holy, holy, holy. If he wants to create that place of holiness, he has to have your heart. Everything about you, everything that you do, it starts in the heart. And today is a tough message about your words. And the only way you're going to defeat this is not to sit there and say it with your words. I can't. I can't do it. It's too hard. You've got to say, God, I surrender my heart. I, I come to you in humility. I'm a sinner saved by grace. I know what my flesh wants to do. I, I give you my heart so that my mouth reflects you and honors you and gives you praise and glory. Proverbs 18, 21 says this. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruits. That tells me a cantankerous person will constantly lay the path of contention. A contentious person will, will constantly lay the path of trouble and turmoil, discontentment. This person will always live in strife. This person will never be happy, always be down and depressed. That is because they use their tongue in such a way that they eat the fruits of it. And if it's not life-giving, it's death-giving. Because they're not using their mouth the way God needs them to. And God said, when you don't, you will reap what you sow. The Bible also says, the Christian heart says, when you find yourself in the way of somebody, be quick to agree with them. What's that mean? That means... Right, wrong, or indifferent. Because there's turmoil between you and this person. Sometimes it's best just to agree. Just to agree. So the strength does not grow. And the words are spun. And side fires are started. And social media blows up. And before you know it, it was, it's now something that, that it never was meant to be. And instead of a firecracker, it's now an atomic bomb. And the effects are associated with the ball. It could be, you can be each and every day that you get up, can you can decide whether you're going to be a life giver or a life taker. We're all, you know how they say pray for your first responders, which are police, law enforcement, EMS, and all these things. They tell you, but listen, you are God's spiritual first responders when it comes to a life. When it comes to speaking words into somebody, you are God's first responders. You may be used by God to show, be that first person on the scene to speak life into somebody. And the reason that you can't, and the reason that you can't hear, and the reason that you can't see, and the reason you can't feel is because you have yet to submit your heart.
Your words can create We know this by the scriptures. God spoke it and it became. Then of course the devil's got the big bang theory going on. And of course people just want to accept that the pop is there. And no, where there's a painter, where there's a painting, there's a painter. Where there's a building, there's an architect. And when this when humanity cannot explain how the world became, they will divide. The devil will help them come up with their own reasoning. And that's taking away God's honor and glory and the devil sitting back laughing about it but you've got to have it in your heart that God is the creator God is the, the architect and God is the painter of your life and, and when you look around you even the scriptures light up it is hard not to see God in the things around you we will be having sunrise service late March on top of that hill, one of the, one of the, every year I'm standing up there because we're not up there all the time, to look around at the vastness of God's creation and everything from one hilltop to another, it's just all taken. There's something about it that makes it divine. In, of course, in some weather, uh, we're only able to stay up there for 30 minutes. That's all we want, because it's cold. But if we could stay up there longer, we would. Because just to have that moment to be still and know that God is God, things can happen. So today we talk about toxic words and we have this definition of toxic and that being anything containing poisonous material capable of causing sickness or even death. And we say in spiritual terms, spiritual sickness and spiritual death. We know spiritual death can happen and see it in the Garden of Eden. If there is anything today causing sickness in your soul, you know yourself better than anybody. You are your own judge. The Bible said judge yourself this day. Every time we take communion, it said judge yourselves. You are fully capable of knowing where you stand. And you're fully capable of coming to the altar and just humbly submitting to the Lord your heart. If there's sickness in your soul, you know when you cough, you know when you got a fever, you know when your body aches, you know when a joint aches. If there's sickness in your soul, you've got to tell God, you've got to come to terms with that with the Lord. If you've never, if you've never been hurt by somebody in their words, this message is for you. If you've never been lifted up, by somebody with their words. This message is for you. If you've ever been encouraged, put down. This message is for you. Let's look at some scripture. Proverbs 12, 18. There is one whose rash, there is one whose rash words are like sword thrusts. But the tongue of the wise brings what? Yeah. Healing. You know it and I know it. God has given us a common sense brain to tell you that there are things that are said to you that will crush you spiritually. There are things, it's like a sword thrust. It will pierce to the heart. You ever catch yourself thinking and feeling, oh man, it's how hurtful that was, that comment. There are kids going to school every day who feels like they're getting a sword thrusted into their heart because of the words that are spoken. And i got to tell you something. In my study of, of words and speaking words and how many fires this little member can cause, in my study of that, I have never ever, say never ever, never, I have never ever come across any line or context of scripture that says you can give it right back to them when they give it to you. When hell comes your way, you can't give hell back. That is not the Christian way. And what we need more of is parents into the God's Word specifically on how to control your lips, how to control your mouth, and how to respond to people who cast out sword thrusts and hurtful things and destructive things. 
How can your children bring out words of healing? Well, we have to understand, help them understand what that is. A family one time did just this. They come up with index cards. And this might help you as a parent to teach your kids the value of their words. They said they come up with trash or truth index cards, statements. They would put their child's name and say, so and so uh, will not amount to anything. Is that truth or trash? And the kids would respond, oh, that's trash. You know how they do. They really get into the answer. And then they say that so and so, um, with God all things are possible. Oh, that's true. And they get into that and they say that. So they come up with these truth or trash index cards. And every once in a while as parents and family will sit down and that will be some of the dinner talk. That will be some of the family time that they have. And it gets into the kids' mind saying, I know the difference between truth and trash. That this thing that my peer had said to me in the lunchroom or in line at the water fountain, this thing that was said to me is trash. I know it's trash. It doesn't, you know, what's that saying? I'm rubber, you're glue, whatever you say bounces off me, sticks to you. Yeah. You've heard it before. But it's kind of like you're, you're in your children, you're building up this rubber barrier that they will refuse to accept any trash words. Listen what the deck attack of the devil is. Now, he is launching. Not that it, I, I am not saying that our response is wrong. This is what I'm saying. Every year that passes, our kids are getting more and more sensitive to words. Sorry. To words. Why? Because the devil, if he can tear them down, smash them down, destroy them, that's what he's going to do. But if we as brothers and sisters and parents of Christ will build our children up and, and give them tools to say, that's trash, that's truth. This is God's way, that's the world's way. You never, you check God's way and not the world's way. If we incorporate that consistently, our kids are going to be rubber coated, Teflon coated, whatever you want to say. And it's not going to stick to them. The problem is, they're starting to believe a lie. And it's hurting. And it's not right. And we want to sit back and we want to be caught up. See, the Bible says, be careful not to be consumed by the cares and concerns of this world. And I'm going to tell you something. As a father, if Joe was to come home and tell me something mean that was done to him, I would, you know, it, it would hurt. It would hurt. But I can either cry with him or I can begin to create steps to build him up and create some Teflon coating, some rubber coating in his life to where I say, listen, this is what God says about you, Lord God, and this is what the world's going to do to you. You don't have to accept that. Let me tell you what the Word of God says, and it won't never change. The world will change every time you look at it. But the Word of God will never change. What are some words that crush the spirit? I hate you. I don't love you anymore. I never loved you. You're not my friend. I just used you to be to get to so and so. You know, these things are crushing our spirit. Words that what about words that crush kids' vision of becoming everything that God has created them to become? We look at them and say, you're just you're stupid. You're a heathen. You're a brat. You'll never amount to anything. And if you don't think parents are saying that to their kids, you're wrong. Because if you want to think parents are perfect parents and they never let their mouth control what, you know, they're, they're, they're angry. They say things when they're angry. Some of you probably grew up thinking your name was Jesus Christ. Because that's what was told to you. Some of you grew up thinking that you never could amount to anything because you were told you were stupid. That you're always destructive.
things that person. And then we go, we under, we want to understand why there's more depression in the world because there's less encouragement. That's what it is. More depression because there's less encouragement. It's not that darkness is there's more darkness. It's just that the light is is becoming more less and less. Words that encourage life or words that would encourage vision in people would say that I can make a difference. People don't volunteer at church because they feel that they can't make a difference or they feel that they're not uh, able and, and stuff. But here at Haven's Church, we want to eliminate that stinking thinking. We want to be able to say you are important. No matter what role you play, you are important because you're going to make a difference. And God can use you. The only thing about volunteering is we ask you to do it with all your heart, with all your mind, and with all your strength. Because you're doing it for the Lord and you're not doing it for HCC as much. I was, I was reading in Acts uh, 17 and beyond. You know, I have one CD and it's pretty awesome to be able to put that CD in there on my way to work in 30 minutes of God's Word or more. In, in there, and uh, it was it just dawned on me that God doesn't live in a building made with hands. He doesn't. What's that saying? Then? Where God where do you live? In the sanctuary of your heart. He said, "I will take my word off tablets of stone, and I will put it upon their, the tablets of their heart." Why? Because God wants to create a sanctuary in you. Tear these walls down. Paint these walls pink. I don't care. Because God don't live here. God lives in you. I will never let a piece of carpet, a color of the wall, come in between me and you. It won't. That new building we put so much effort into, it can burn down tomorrow. I will not get caught up in the sympathy of loss. Because the vision... It's not in the structural building. The vision is in you. What you can see. What you can envision. Some people want to put a, their name on a plaque and slap it on the wall. It's a, it's a memory of vision. But we should never be stuck on the investment, if you know what I mean. It's nice that at the end of these pews, it's, you can tell who's donated them. But you know what? These pews don't mean a thing. We can take them all out. You can sit on your dock in this sanctuary. And God will still do a revival in your heart. Yes. Amen. So I'm not so much for memorial class and who donated what. All I know is God donated his son to, to die for the world. There's anyone that deserves a pocket, it's him. So here are a couple of things. Guard your heart from toxic words. Because you, why do I ask you to guard your heart from toxic words? Because you cannot control what comes out of someone else's mouth. You can only control what comes out of your mouth. Stop trying to control what comes out of other people's mouth. That is wasted energy. You need to invest it fully into does God have your heart so he can have your lips. That's the focus right there. Quit focusing. I can't believe you said this. Well, let me tell you what I think of you. See, you're trying to control the environment. Stop it. Control yourself. You cannot control the environment. Every time I walk up to that window, it could be my last window. Because I had no control of what happens when I pull that person over for a violation. And I walk up to that window. Matter of fact, the, 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 the conclusion of that traffic stop, I might be able to control them on whether they get a warning citation or an actual uh, citation, but I cannot control the response. Nor do I try. Right. Would I want them to have more understanding of the situation? Yes. Would it make me feel better? Yes. But if they want to act, if they want to go spastic on me, I can't control that. I just got to deal with it as it comes. 
Proverbs 4, verse 20 says this. My son, be attentive to my words. Incline your ear to the, my saying. Stop there. That is the beginning. God's going to have your heart. When he has your heart, he'll have your ears. If he has your ears, he's got your attention. Amen. Verse 23, same chapter. Keep your heart with all vigilance, for from it flow the springs of life. If your heart's black, so ain't your well. If your heart is black, so isn't your well. Some of our hearts may be brown, well, so ain't your well. Amen. It's brown too. Amen. It's not very clear. Amen. <laughs> we tested our well water recently and, and, and stuff. It has sediment in it. If you look closely at well water, it's all well water generally has sediment. And normally you have a filter that goes through and stuff. But if you take that well water and you set it up against the filter, uh, chlorine water, you can tell the extreme differences. And one is more pleasing to, to drink than the other. I, I, I Brown heart, black heart, they're, they're not appealing to me. People who want to walk around in a hurtful mind mentality, people who enjoy because they have more practice in walking in a fence than they do forgiveness, people who want to walk in a fence, no, I don't, it's not me, I don't want nothing to do with it. Um, I'll help you if you want help, but the thing of it is you like walking around in the mire, and I don't. I'm not going there. Because it doesn't flow with springs of life. God has to have your heart, to have your ears, to have your mouth, and, and, and it's going to affect the whole well. It's going to affect the whole well. Guard against any toxic words, especially the things that is not that's not true. I mean, hey, you're going to mess up, and you're going to have to eat some crow, and you're going to have to ask for forgiveness. However, there is an attack out there. You and I have been through it. I personally have been through it. Have you ever had someone misrepresent your good intentions? Have you ever had someone, it got back to you, something you had said, and some of what this person had said about you, a little bit of it was true. And you're like, wait a minute, I never meant that. You ever had you ever been misunderstood? This is what I'm talking about. And the devil is a master of it. To represent what I call mistruths. Yeah, you said that, but that's not what you mean, meant. But by the time it got back to you, a dozen people done heard the wrong interpretation. You understand where I'm going? It's a, it's a mistruth, and the devil loves spinning in it. Happens all the time. I'm telling you to guard your heart from stuff like that. I'm telling you, whenever you have opportunity to speak truth into it, speak truth into it. Don't let the lie continue to speak the truth. Here's a, here's a focus thought. You are not who other people say you are. You are who God says you are. The problem is we're not into God's Word enough to know what He says about us. God created a new spirit. God says you were born again. In the newness of life, God created you in His image. I'm telling you, you are not who other people say you are. You are who God says you are. And you are more than conquerors through Christ who strengthens you. And God says there's no weapon formed against you that will prosper. Amen. God also said that your battles are not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers of the air. And yet we fight with flesh and blood each and every day. The second point, speak life-giving words every chance you get. Life-giving words every chance you get. You know, sometimes your best verbal response to a conflict or a problem is silence. Ephesians 4.29 
Let no corrupting talk come out of your mouth, but only such as is good for building up as fits the occasion, that it may give grace to those who hear this. English Standard Version, I love this because of as it fits the occasion. Because there are some times I've got to speak word truth of your life and it's going to come across as critical. But sometimes i got to be critical. Because if I don't expect a certain amount of excellence in your life, then, then what kind of pastor would I be? If I didn't encourage you to do something better. Now, of course, this takes tact and compassion and grace and everything, but as it fits the occasion, so you're going to have to speak some hard truths in people's lives, and then as it fits the occasion, you're going to have to advise people, well, ah, this is not a very wholesome talk. You know, it's not very comely as a Christian. Or, you know, personally speaking, you know what corrupt talk can come out of the company that keep can, you can be guilty by association. So if everybody's got a mindset that they don't care about serving the Lord. Guess what your mindset will run a risk in doing? Not very being very serious about your walk with the Lord. See, I was a good sinner before. I don't make a good sinner now. Every time, see, one of the signs that God's really got a hold of your heart is because He changes your lips. He changes what you say. Because if the Word of God says beyond the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak, then if you're speaking corruptible, unwholesome things, it's a sign of how much God's got a hold of your heart. Do you understand? So it's no longer that anybody's judging you as much as the Word of God is putting you on the judgment seat. And that's how churches operate. Well, you shouldn't say that. Well, you shouldn't judge me. I'm not judging you. The Word of God is. It says, you see it, no whole unwholesome thing, no corrupting thing should come out of your mouth. But only the things that are good for building. So if you come across a very critical Christian and every time that they have something to tell you, it's always something negative. I told Lila the other day, you know what? I'm tired of people bringing me problems. I want people to bring me not only the problem, I want them to bring me two solutions. Amen. We can talk about and complain about everything all day long. I want solutions. And I had to go to God and I was mad. I was like, like, oh, why am I getting all these complaints? It's because I, they're living in that kind of environment all the time. They're, they're, it's easy to get into a complaining mode and not a solution mode. It's hard to come up with some, some solutions. Try. The next time someone comes to you and complains about something, tell them, well, what, what's, give me two solutions. You'll see him say, <laughs> well, I never thought about that. Well, why not? It's good enough to think about the problem, bring the solution. The last thing is speak life-giving words to yourself and to your circumstances. And really what I'm getting to is Mark 11, 23. When I say speak life to your circumstances, and yourself, I'm saying in Mark 11, 23, Truly I say to you, whoever says in this mouth will be taken up and thrown down into the sea, and does not doubt his heart, but believes what he says, it will come to pass, it will be done for him. Now listen to me. I, I had one of those moments, I was like, God, oh, I've never seen it like that before, but thank you. When I read that scripture, you know what I thought? The apostles didn't go around being a bunch of excavators. They didn't go, I, I don't like that mountain. I don't like that mountain over there. What is God saying in this scripture? He's not telling the apostles to go around to physical mountains and tell it to be removed. He is telling his apostles to look at your spiritual mountains, your spiritual challenges, the people that give you problems because there's a spirit involved there somewhere because we don't fight against flesh and blood. We fight against the principalities and powers of the air. There is a spirit at work somehow, some way. He, God is trying to tell his apostles, he said, just don't doubt in your heart. Just look at the glass in your life and speak to them and tell them to be removed and they will be removed. And I am telling you, some people's Goliath in their life is their mouth. And you cannot 
knows that I can't control my mind. Let this stuff do over. You've got to have faith in your heart and your in your with God and say, I can do this. Or our, our, our relationship. Some people want to say, oh, it's just, it's just easier to get a divorce. Uh, maybe she or he never loved me to begin with. Listen, quit speaking words of defeat. I, there's a thing in our house that said, we don't use the word can't. Because can't never done anything. Can't will never do anything. I say, go use those words, boys. And so I say, use that I can. I can. I will. That's what Jesus had to do. He, he did not want to go to the cross. But he said, I can go to the cross and I will go to the cross. I mean, I'm here to tell you. All you've got to do is, is and I'm not a black and grab it pastor. I'm, I'm really not. You know, hey, I'm, you know, I, I don't, I'm not that way. I mean, it's not appealing to me, but I am a faith preaching pastor. I believe the word of God. And it says, if all I have to do is speak to my mouths and they will be removed, I will speak to my circumstances and they will be removed. That's what you've got to do. God has to have your heart before you can have your lips. Will you stand with me in closing? That's a simple message. And it doesn't take long to preach it, but it takes a long time to receive it. And it's only because, it's because already I'm dealing with thoughts in your mind that say, well, I've tried this before and I've failed miserably. Matter of fact, I've tried this a dozen times and I've failed 11.5 times. And this year, we're already been away through February and I've tried to correct my mind. And I started in January and I fasted and I prayed. And it's just, it's just hard. I'm telling you. You speak to your mountains. You, you tell your, your heart and say, God, God must, God have my heart. Have it all. Amen. Put your word on the tablets of my heart and have it all. You have my mind. You have my lips. You have my heart. Just, God, I know you want to create a sanctuary in me. I'm giving it to you right now. Jesus, take these, take my simple nature, which is which is what I'm trained to do. Take my simple nature and nail to the cross. I give you myself. I give you all of me. Lord, I just pray that you want to use me to speak life into someone's situation. The next time the phone rings, Lord God, let me be a life speaker into that person that needs prayer. That person I know is in the hospital, Lord God. Let my words be filled with healing. Where their faith may be shaken, where their circumstance might be overwhelming to them, let me speak. Let me be your mouthpiece. Let me be your ambassador. Let me speak health into their life, healing into their life. Let me let me help build them, Lord God. They are my brothers. They are my sisters, Lord God. I, I will not fail them. I will not fail you. I will walk in faith. I will look at my Goliaths. I will look at my mountains. And I will speak words of faith from my heart. And I will, I will lift up your name and glory even when everything around me is, is shaking and falling down. Let me lift up your word. Let me lift up your praise and glory, Lord God. I just want you to have all of me. That's what, that's what we are here for this morning. On this cold, wintry morning, Lord God, we are here to submit to you. To have more of us. Lord God, I just pray that your Holy Spirit, if there's anybody within my ear, your Holy Spirit will have their mind and will have a heart. And he will cause each and every person to draw closer to you this morning. You're the one.
you are, maybe you, you say 